Hello everyone, I'm going to talk about Google Classroom. This is basically one of the apps that Google offers as part of its Google Apps for Education suite, which includes uh, Google Docs, Google Drive, Gmail, Calendar, uh, and of course Google Classroom. Now, your university or college has to sign up for this service, but it is a free service and it's basically open to anyone. There's lots of universities and colleges that are using it. So basically, I'm going to talk about the key features and how it promotes collaborative learning and teaching. So this is our home page and this is what the classes look like. Um, this is a view from the point of view of a, a teacher and also a student. This particular one where there's my, well, there should be my face, that's me in a class, but all the rest, I'm the actual teacher of that class. And if we click on home, just very quickly, we'll see again, I'm teaching all these classes and I'm enrolled in these two, okay? Uh, so let's just look at a class that I taught recently to relatively great success. The students appeared to really enjoy it. Uh, this was a listening and speaking class I did for teaching English for academic purposes. And basically, as you can see, you have announcements, which look like this. You can also comment upon that, and t students can comment as well. There's also assignments. So you basically just think about the title, description, you know, deadline, and you can attach an array of, an array of files and direct it to a specific class, which is the beauty of it. So if you're, te if you're teaching multiple sections of a single type of class, so listening and speaking, for example, or academic writing, then you can assign multiple tasks to multiple students. Uh, I won't go too much into the technical detail because I'd like to show you the collaborative elements. Um, so for example, let's just scroll down. Um, Okay, so effective presentations, what are they? Basically, this was an assignment, and what I had done is created a few things. I sourced a video on, you know, what is an effective business, uh, rather, what is an effective presentation. I also had another video on the principles of effective, effective presentations. I set these for homework, so in a sense, I kind of flipped the classroom um, to try and get them to watch those videos outside the classroom and understand. Then, I attached the Word document because you can do that. I also created uh, a particular Google Doc uh, for them to answer a question, what makes an effective presentation? Uh, in this case, this was particularly, this was group work. Now this other document, what makes an effective presentation? This was basically a copy of a handout for each student. So each student had their own individual copy so that their peers couldn't edit it for them. If we just open that, We'll just have a look. This was the basic kind of look uh, outlook of what it looked like. Uh, it's a document created in Google Docs, and as you see, it's just like a worksheet, but you don't have to print it, which, if you can imagine, if you have 16 students, 30 students, you're saving that much paper. Uh, you might argue that students like working on paper and it's more uh, efficient, it's better. Well, when you think about a class of 30 or well, 16 and you have 10 of those that's quite a lot of resources that you're spending and you know during the summers and other times of the year the copiers can actually break down and you lose kind of a lot of time trying to source uh, resources so that was an example of just a work sheet this was a collaborative one and students worked on this together now if you can imagine if students are going to write this on paper they wouldn't necessarily copy that down or take, they might take pictures of it, but that's not the same as actually typing out answers or, you know, as we did in, traditionally on paper, writing out answers. So these were all different tasks. Here they had to list ideas, as many as they could, about what makes an effective presentation. The next one, they had to discuss these ideas and then summarize what constitutes an effective presentation. So these were three different groups in three different colors, actually four different groups. And then at the end of it, to kind of contextualize it, they had to do a mini presentation about themselves, which of course wasn't performed on Google Docs or Google Classroom. It was something to bring what we had done in online collaboratively into the uh, classroom. Now one way I might approach this is to have them do it for homework, record it, and then they would come in and uh, collaboratively work together. They would do peer assessment of each other. Okay. Um, I also use this space to, well, set announcements and homework. 
so of various kinds because I really wanted them to work together to understand there is a different way of working. They don't have to always meet up. Um, students, just like teachers, can be lazy uh, depending on the weather. If it's particularly rainy outside or if it's a weekend and you're dispersed, you're across the city, you don't want to meet up together. So a space like this can enable that collaboration because students can work on a document together, they can share videos, they can add resources, so in effect they can add to the content and help build the curriculum as it were, just thus allaying some of the pressure from the teachers. So anyway, that was just a brief overview of what you could do. It was a kind of a lightning overview. Uh, if you have any questions, please do feel free to, to ask me.